This week we have an extended interview with Jihad Baloch, who was the public face of Al Jazeera Arabic when it began and when it was being bombed by the United States and when it was a vital media player against mainstream news. In a Double Standards exclusive, we spoke to this former strategic manager at the channel about its past, present and future in the context of the so-called Arab Spring. With me is Jihad Balut, the former face to the outside world for the Al Jazeera network owned by Qatar's government, but he's also worked at the BBC and Al Arabiya. Jihad, welcome to Double Standards. Let's start with your career, in a way, at Al Jazeera when it began and was such a revolutionary television station. It must have been revolutionary because the Americans were bombing their bureaus. Tell me a little bit the beginnings of the channel. Well, apart from actually the Americans uh, bombing and a few Arab countries actually despising Al Jazeera at the time, uh, Al Jazeera in itself has created what's, what I could would, would consider actually a revolution in, in, in Arab media. And this, this has, irrespective of what's happening now, this has to be actually, uh, uh, it is something that is very good for Al Jazeera and very good for, for the people who follow Al Jazeera. And uh, I should declare an interest. I worked at the Arabic side uh, too, although I definitely applied for a job from you, I'm sure, at some point at the beginning. Of course, now the talk about Al Jazeera is very different around the Arab world. They're not so much getting banned by Arab governments. They're being applauded by some Arab governments. Tell me when you think a change occurred in policy at Al Jazeera, because it's now under a lot of fire for its coverage specifically of uh, Syria and, uh, and other countries in the Arab Actually, world. Actually, with the advent of, of what's, the, what's considered to be uh, the Arab Spring, um, Al Jazeera has gone in, through a, a great change from uh, the, the flag bearer of objective journalism to what peop many people and many observers consider to be a, a policy or polit foreign politics led news organization. Uh, at the time when Al Jazeera has actually changed all this, when Al Jazeera started, it started as a project of pure professional prof uh, journalism and actually it gave the people what they wanted to give what they wanted to hear, uh, but as we see now, which is a real shame, because everybody at that time when Al Jazeera started wanted to be part of this ongoing professional project for, for, all, for all purposes, on a social level, on a cultural level, on, and on a professional level. But now it's, it's, it's a pity that it's been attacked, and to a certain extent, rightly so. We should say there are a lot of uh, uh, good journalists, I believe, who are working for Al Jazeera, Arabic and Al Jazeera English and Al Jazeera Arabic are slightly different. Why have they changed, according to you? Because it's quite a thing for you, who knew Al Jazeera so well, to say what you just said. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't like to speculate too much. I'm, I mean, I'm like every other observer uh, on the sidelines, trying to look in and, and trying to understand what, what's been going on. But it seems to me uh, that Al Jazeera has lost its feel for what the Arab public wants to hear. Um, definitely, there is a, a wave of change in the Arab world, and this should be applauded and supported. Uh, but a news organization has to be professional. And to me, uh, and to various other observers, I think Al Jazeera erred while trying to um, handle and approach these uh, uh, popular uh, intifadas or uprisings or revolutions or the spring, Arab Spring, whatever you want to call it. I think at, at initially, uh, especially with, when it came to uh, Egypt, I think no two observers would argue over the fact that Al Jazeera did a very, very good job. But suddenly things changed, especially when it came to Libya and Bahrain and Syria. And it seems to me that there are other considerations that the uh, decision makers at Al Jazeera are taking, which I think is detracting from its professional stance. Well, there were high-profile resignations, dismissals we don't know, of course, what Akamfa left. Some people were saying, oh, this is because he was friends with the CIA. These kinds of rumors at the same time, personnel changes at the top. Just describe from your point of vantage point as a media analyst now, how you saw these changes occurring well, at Al Jazeera. Changes at Al Jazeera did not happen suddenly. It was a subtle 
movement. And I think the breaking point or, or, or the watershed was after the fall of Baghdad in 2003. I think after that, subtle changes were taking place. And since that date, you see a lot of well-known names actually either left or were pushed, pushed uh, over. Um, but it actually came, it came very, very obviously only uh, recently. Now, again, I don't want to speculate. Uh, I have a lot of respects for everybody that I've worked with at Al Jazeera, and I had very high regard for them. They are really highly professional. But you and I know how it is when you're working under political pressure, and let alone the deadlines. Um, again, I mean, I, I don't want to speculate on what uh, what Dach Hanfer was he was he uh, asked to leave or what, did he leave or was it the CIA issue of the WikiLeaks and whatever. Uh, suffice it to say, you're absolutely right. There has been what is akin to a hemorrhage uh, within Al Jazeera, and I only heard this morning that uh, there are. There is a group of people that, that perhaps would, uh, are seriously thinking about either um, putting this, uh, themselves on the side or actually want to leave altogether. Well, I know about political pressure from the BBC, actually, most. That's where I felt it most. We are really talking about government power, just as governments uh, hold the BBC to uh, account at times of war. How do you see Qatari foreign policy having changed um, all of this? <laughs> Again, the BBC maintained throughout, throughout whatever happens uh, in, in the UK, it maintained a measure of credibility. Obviously, the BBC got it completely wrong over Iraq. And in a sense, all stations reflect their uh, owners or uh, f funding. Um, how have you found it different, especially in the context of the Arab Spring? Because Al Arabiya as well, where you worked... Uh, many people in the Arab world seeing it as completely on the side of uh, the rebels, say, in Syria. Well, uh, this is strange. Um, uh, Al Arabiya being uh, uh, the organ of, of a very uh, um, conservative regime, i.e. Saudi Arabia, is on the side of the rebels. I think that's, there is, there is, uh, there is uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> a funny thing there. Uh, but Al Arabiya has never changed. It has always pursued this kind of editorial policy. Mm. So really, it's, it's not making too many waves as such, because the audiences are not disappointed. The, I mean, this is the way Al Arabiya mm. has been ever since its, its launch back in, in 2003. So why have the Qatari royal family changed their view? Well, I, I think you have to ask uh, a member of, of the Qatari royal family about they that. They don't come on the show but, for some reason. But my, my impression is, um, I think... Al Jazeera has reached a stage where um, it has become, according to the, some Qataris, the or decision makers, uh, a potential weapon to use in, f in furthering uh, Qatari foreign policy. Um, and this is the mistake. I think they have been, as I said, the, the, the watershed was 2003 and the fall of Iraq, and then things subtly began to change. And people on the inside who are involved in the decision-making process uh, sense that. Um, and it was manifested, by, as, as I explained before, by people actually uh, leaving Al Jazeera, senior people at that, and faces that were um, considered to be part and parcel of the Al Jazeera phenomenon. Um, but I think there is a political expediency that dictated on the Qataris to ultimately use this, uh, this ch media channel to the detriment, I think, of the Arab media in general. How ironic that uh, when they try to wield the soft power, they kind of lose it, because it seems that uh, stations like Russia Today and uh, other stations, I would say, of course, Press TV, this channel, are uh, spreading across the Arab world for, to give a different viewpoint on, say, what's happening in Syria, what was happening in Libya, during the revolution there, and what's of course happening in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain? Um, I think it's logical. When you find the main Arab news broadcasters on one side putting the spotlight on certain issues to the absence of anything else, uh, then audiences naturally will start looking for other alternative sources of news. I'm not saying that they stopped watching, but I'm th I think 
there is an element of credibility that that is started to go amiss when it comes to these main Arab broadcasters. And they remain to be main and mainstream. I mean, let, 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 let's not have any qualms about that. But then audiences started looking somewhere else. Thus comes uh, uh, Press TV, Al-An in Arabic, uh, Russia Today in both English and Arabic. I mean, I'm surprised at, at, the, at the ways at which Press TV, uh, I mean, um, Russia Today actually moved into, into the audience's houses. I mean, if one speaking from, for a moment, uh, from the perspective of the leadership of a country, you're kind of saying um, the soft power isn't as powerful as it, as it could be, because as soon as you try and wield it for your own geopolitical reasons, you lose viewers. Well, I, I think this comes in, 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 the, in, the con in the context of talking politics. But really what I want to stress about here is the loss of Al Jazeera as a viable and uh, long-standing um, Arab media that was at a certain stage a credible source of information for all, for all parts of the Arab world as well as the Western world. I mean, it, it was perhaps watched by the West at certain junctures in, in, in the content, content prehistory as much as, as anything else, as much as CNN, for example. Uh, so this is the real shame about it all. I mean, soft power, you know, sort of... I, I'm not very sure that, that I would put this in this context. I think in, in media terms, it is a loss not only for, for Al Jazeera. I think what's happening in Arab media now exemplified by Al Jazeera, is a loss for Arab audiences at large. Of course, it wasn't just Al Jazeera Arabic that are uh, playing into this kind of geopolitical game. Libya, did it surprise you, the coverage? I mean, here on uh, the Sky Channel we had here, of course, the United States broadcast, the CBS, NBC, all cheering on, basically being part of the rebels, and then decamping immediately Gaddafi was killed. I, I mean, it didn't surprise me as such. I mean, we, we all saw and lived the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan. And we had, if, if not first-hand experience, we had an inkling of how the uh, Western media, when, when its, its interests are at, at stake, how they would behave. I mean, I'm, I have it on very good authority that even some Arab uh, media went out and paid money and sent experts to Libya to start um, transmitters and, and radio and television transmitters from inside Libya. But the problem is for, for the people who got entangled, and I say entangled because I think it's, it's, a, it's a minefield, and, and they, where they got their media in, in, entangled into, into the issue of, of Libya, I think they became so confident that they thought that they, they could actually rule the world, that, uh, a lot, that wealth can actually ruin lives and run, run and ruin lives. Uh, the Libya was so easy to do, and it was thought that perhaps this could be done in Syria. And I think this is where the problem lies, specifically where the problem lies, because Syria is very different to Libya, is very different to uh, Egypt, in, in all manners of speaking. Uh, and I believe, from my analysis for the, of the past week or so, I think there is a change in the, in the official Arab public perception. I, I mean official, because Arab populations are very different. But the official uh, um, Arab perspective vis-à-vis -vis Syria, and I think we're seeing its manifestations now as we, as we speak. Central to all Arab broadcasting was always the Palestinian question. Do you think that's what's slightly influencing this Syrian question? Because surely it surprised you as someone who's worked in this for this long that broadcasters would so quickly oppose a, uh, a government in Syria it that has supported the Palestinians for I that mean, many years. It surprised me, yes to be honest, because I felt that whatever happens, as you correctly mentioned, Palestine would be at the center of attention, and it remains at the center of the attention of, of, of the Arab populace at large, irrespective of their, their political inclinations. But I felt that the media would pay its due, its due uh, attention. Uh, a case in point would be the latest uh, bombing uh, by Israel of Gaza. I mean, hardly any news whatsoever. If at all, it was third and fourth news item, which uh, shocked me, yes, it surprised me, perhaps, and it made me even sadder at the state that we are in.
I think that's why Hillary Clinton watches these programs, because that was quite an outburst from her during the Libyan conflict, I think it was, when she said, these other stations are doing so much better than Voice of America and um, U.S. network ch channels. Well, I mean, I, I remember an official, uh, an American official uh, back in 2001, 2002, saying that Al Jazeera is a beacon of light in an otherwise dark Middle East, or, or worse, I'm paraphrasing, or worse to this effect. And only a few months afterwards, Al Jazeera was the purveyor of, of uh, terrorist information uh, throughout the world. And your co-workers were killed. Uh, I mean, Al Jazeera at the time perhaps paid the, paid the ultimate price several times. And our offices were bombed at the time, in, in both in Pakistan and, and Baghdad. And I think we lost uh, our, uh, um, our dear colleague. Uh, yes, of course. But, I mean, this shows you how politics tries to put its, its full uh, print on, on, on media. Well, I did detect some hope when you said you can maybe see a change in the Syrian coverage. How, do you, how far do you think uh, this change that we've been describing over the course of this interview actually is going to, be st is going to change again now? And because they're losing so many viewers, well, they're so out of touch with the so-called Arab street. Well, I don't think that, honestly, Al Jazeera... And all uh, would be able to roll back. They have a lot of money. I don't think Al Jazeera would roll back uh, the, the style of its coverage without losing further credibility. And this is the conundrum that Al Jazeera is really trying to tackle. This is the problem. They've already lost certain measure of credibility by its, its, its uh, coverage of the Syrian event and the coverage of lack or lack of it of the Bahraini, what's happening in Bahrain. So to actually turn back, it's going to lose even further credibility. Uh, when I said, I, I, you see, politics dictate how, what things are covered. But I think Al Jazeera went way, way beyond any kind of imagination, considering what Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera used to be. Well, just finally then, you're obviously closer to... Arab broadcasting in a way, which is why you're feeling that passion about that. We should put it into some kind of perspective. What about mainstream Western media? Uh, well, nothing surprised me in the coverage. <laughs> you're just smiling. But... Nothing really surprised me in, in, in the coverage. There are uh, bits of... of uh, 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 in broadcast media, not really much. They never learned not from really the mistakes much. of the Iraq war or Afghanistan? Well, they haven't really learned. It seems they haven't learned much. In the print media, it's a different story. But it's, 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 it's the usual quote-unquote culprits and, and certain writers who actually go deep, deep inside the story and find out exactly what's happening and try to provide it to their, their audiences uh, in, in, in as balanced as, a way as possible. Uh, but broadcast, I mean, I'm surprised that, that without really mentioning names, certain terminology that, that's, been, that's, that's being used uh, in, in certain coverages, not, not only in opinion pieces, even in, in, uh, in actual reporting, uh, which, uh, for example, I'll just give you an example. One of the main mainstream uh, broadcasters in, in the UK uh, decided to consider the burning of the Quran as an advertent. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I don't know how inadvertent it would be to burn something that's, that the West should, should know that it's very sensitive to certain people. Now, I'm not criticizing as much as I'm trying to say that sometimes term, terminology makes a great deal of difference in media. And the West hasn't learned yet that there are Arabs out there who are bilingual and actually monitor the Western media. And uh, they pick on these things. Thank you very much for sharing your perspective, Jihad Balut. Thank you very much. You're welcome.